Hello, beautiful souls. I am so excited to be here. Um, this is going to be a fun video. I've been getting a lot of info and I've been wanting to kind of share them on little IGTVs and then the info just kept coming in. I kept getting little puzzle pieces, putting them together and full circle. We are now here and we're going to create just a little longer video with all of the info in one. Um, it's going to kind of be all over the place, so who knows what I'll end up titling it. I always let my higher self or inner child play with that. Um, but okay, so I'm just going to get right into it because um, there's a lot of shit going on out in the world right now. Yeah, yeah. But again, I think on my last video, I mentioned how it's kind of the calm of the storm. We're kind of in the eye of the storm right now. Even though it seems like there's absolute chaos going on, it's still somewhat calm because... <sighs> okay, so from a fifth dimensional frequency, of course, there is no light or dark, no good or bad. But from this third dimensional, or we're kind of in that middle fourth dimensional reality right now, there is light and dark. And... I think I mentioned in that in my last video as well is the dark right now, whatever you want to call this elite group of individuals, is just doing a really good job at um, holding their responsibilities, doing a really good job at what they want to get done. But what they're also not realizing is we're just as good as that or good at that. We are realizing um, we might have started after they started, but we have them to thank because it woke a bunch of us up. We woke the fuck up and it's not stopping and we're going to keep waking up and we're going to keep wanting the truth to be told. We're going to keep wanting to see the truth no matter how ugly it is. That is why everyone watching this video, all of us way showers, light workers, star seeds, whatever you identify yourself as, um, we are actual warriors who are willing to look at those ugly parts of ourselves in order to face it, come face to face with the darkness on an individual and collective level. Even if we might be scared, that's okay. We're realizing that it's okay to have all of our feelings about this whole process of waking up, but we're willing to do it because we see the importance. We know that it matters. And that's the part that's um, so important for all of us light workers to really embody right now is don't be scared about what's coming up because we need to face it face to face. We need to be able to see the demons in order to transmute them in order to be in clear communication with all parts of ourselves from one perspective in the fifth dimensional level and we're not gonna we're gonna try to stay um probably 40 today <laughs> who knows i always live in like the seventh dimension but um from one perspective um it's all neutral it's all it's all us it's all one source everything's just doing its job this is all part of it. This is all in the timeline. If it wasn't happening like it is right now, it would be happening in another way. I'm not saying that that makes any of this okay. I'm just saying um, be easy on yourself. Understand that this is supposed to be happening. You're exactly where you're meant to be. Um, and we have so much support around us on all dimensions, on all levels. Um, okay, so let's start with perceptions and frequencies. So thoughts. Thoughts are frequencies that come in and out of our sphere of consciousness that's around us, okay? And we either communicate with those thoughts or we just let them go right on by. So that's why you hear like in meditations, um, just let your thoughts come in and out. Don't try to stop them. Because what frequencies do is frequencies are uh, going one direction. There's so many directions they could be going, but like say there's a thought. It's on a path, it's this frequency is on a path that's going to come through your sphere, whether you like it or not, whether you want it to or not. And if you try to stop it, it's just going to keep pushing harder because it's like, whoa, why is this frequency trying to stop me? Why is this um, person trying to stop my path? It's like a block in the road, but they're like, I'm still going to, I'm ha this is my job. I'm going to go through this path. So basically, don't try to stop your thoughts right now, but be in control. So why I'm, why I'm going here is thoughts or thinking is not a bad thing. Again, it's part of being human. We signed up for this. Um, you can eventually get to a state um, where you just don't have thoughts. That's what basically um, a lot of very enlightened individuals, um, a lot of the uh, Tibetan monks, they wake up and they don't even have a thought. <laughs> I, could you imagine? Um, anyways, but it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. So never, ever, ever judge thoughts. But what's important is knowing when to engage with a thought, when to be like, oh, that's a thought I want to be in communication with, or when to step back and let it go on through. Again, it's going to go on through whether you like it or not. Um, 
but you have the choice, free will planet, free will being, whether you want to engage with a thought or back up. Um, so, okay. Thoughts. Where do we want to go from that? Letting my higher self kind of direct this. Cause there's a lot. Okay. Perceptions and frequencies. Thank you. So perceptions and frequencies are basically, okay. Perceptions are free. So just like a thought is a frequency. When I say frequency, um, picture it like a form, a piece of consciousness. Everything in this entire planet and this entire galaxy is consciousness and it's just taking different form, but it's all from the same source, that same consciousness, whatever you like to call source, God, um, universe, whatever you are comfortable with, it's okay. But understanding you have to be okay in order to soften to this information that a lot of um, people like myself and all the other speakers out there are talking about is you have to be okay with the fact that there is a larger source consciousness out there that we are all made from. And we're all made from the exact same image and likeness of that source of that light. We're just um, expressing it in different forms in different bodies or it's expressing itself in a thought It's expressing itself in a picture in some line. <laughs> Look at that beautiful picture. I'm at my parents house house sitting right now um, or letting my dogs run around. So different scenery here. Um, anyways, everything is consciousness. Everything is form. Um, and everything is like a frequency. And so frequency are kind of little pieces. So if you say you look, you're looking at like a bubble of consciousness, even though everything's consciousness and you take a piece out of it, that'll be a frequency. Okay. And then it can express itself in a different form when you take that little piece out. So the piece we're talking about right now that we're focusing on of consciousness is perceptions. Perceptions is a frequency um, of consciousness. Okay. <laughs> I hope you're following that. Anyways, um, what we do is perceptions is a part of our being that we send out from ourselves to a situation and it creates a feedback loop. So we might be watching the news or we might be observing friends or in communication with someone and we have a perception. We have a way that we are perceiving the information and it creates this feedback loop between whatever you're observing and yourself based on your perceptions, based on what frequencies you're holding um, for that situation. So that feedback loop, we always expect subconsciously and now consciously when you hear this, it's just a thing that humans do is we always, always, always expect a feedback loop to return to us. When we observe something, we're always subconsciously or consciously expecting our perceptions to perceive it in a certain way. Um, and so that's why becoming neutral sometimes can be very hard because you already have a conscious or subconscious perception on situations that you're already, before you even are engaged in the situation, you already have a deep rooted perception about how you're going to receive information back from whatever you're observing. Um, and so what we're doing right now as a collective is trying to change that or trying to um, soften into a, a neutral and, and soften into neutrality so that we don't have those preconceived um, expectations that, okay, when I watch this, this is how I'm going to interpret it. Um, that's very, it's not very easy. <laughs> that's easier for individuals like us or light workers to do because we're okay with being able to change and being able to humble ourselves enough to be like, oh, I used to perceive that in a way that obviously doesn't serve me or serve anyone else. And so I'm okay with the fact that I need to look at that, humble myself and change. But for some individuals, um, that's super hard and their ego is going to be like, nope, I'm right. You're wrong. I'm keeping this perception forever. Um, so we're being the way showers and we're also collectively doing it first so that it's easier for other people to do. So how we perceive something is based on our perceptions of the situation, which again is a, which is subconscious belief systems. This can come from programming from past parallel future lifetimes. This can be from your parents. This can be just programming in general. There's so many belief system constructs that we don't need to get into that, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you see which belief systems are inside of your auric field or inside of your body. Um, so, okay. So when we, okay, so let's talk about childhood. So when a parent forces, sorry, I have notes too, cause I want to make sure I don't miss anything. When a parent forces a child to follow their belief, such as religion, what happens if these is, okay, so that parent has a belief system and they have a child and before they even say the child is just born and they're holding the child in its arms, they're not clearly communicating with the child like with words yet. 
Um, but they're already, already, without even knowing it, probably subconsciously sending perceptions and frequencies to the child to stick around the child of like, this is how I'm going to mold this child. Um, that seems kind of intense and scary. And some people, it actually is way too intense. Um, but what happens is when a parent forces a child to follow their belief systems, what happens if they, is they physically sent out um, frequencies from themselves about their belief system. It's rooted, so the, they have a belief system in them, say religion. They send a frequency out from their belief system to that child and they attach it to their auric field. It's actually a frequency set with intention. When a frequency is sent with intention and attention, which I talked about, I think two videos ago, the frequency is going to do its job. So the frequency is going to stick to that child and try to start molding him the way that the parent wants him to. And that's happening. Um, it can happen about something super small, a super small belief system sticks to a child or something super big. Um, and we're all freaking breaking out of that right now because we're realizing a lot of the belief systems we have aren't ours. They were probably sent to us and stuck around us and trying to mold us from parents, from news, from the elite, from Hollywood, from so many, you could go on and on with that list. And we're realizing like, what do I actually believe? What do I actually want to put my attention on and not allow frequencies to stick to me? Um, Cause it's creating like a net around us and it makes us perceive things differently. So what happens is those frequencies from that parent goes to that child. It sticks around them. This is, um, so I know this, you could look at this so many ways. I'm talking about it, how I see it when I physically do my healings, I physically work with energy and frequencies. And I'm, when I'm pulling out cords and attachments from individuals and I communicate with those cords or attachments, I see where it was sent and why and from who. Um, and so from an energy standpoint, again, you can look at this anyway, but I'm going from an energetic kind of metaphysical standpoint here is, um, it's creating this bubble, this filter. So this perception is sent from the parent to the child and there's this bubble and more and more are being sent from the parents to the children. And there's this like bubble or, um, certain pieces of frequencies that aren't the child's that's from the parents stuck around them. And it begins to create like a net which actually creates a layer of belief systems, kind of like a filter. And so no, so no matter what information comes to that child from other sources, they're going to filter it through that belief system that has been stuck on them by their parents. That has been, because the, the frequency is on their auric field. So a thought from someone else that might be opposing that religion or going against something that is from their parents is trying to come into that child and it's either going to filter and the child's not going to be able to comprehend it or is going to fight it or it's going to bounce right back and it's just not even going to get anywhere near the child. Um, that can be good or bad because sometimes um, the frequencies trying to get into the child could be for the best, highest good of the child. But if they're bogged down by the belief systems of their parents, um, it's not it's not going to have a chance to get into them unless they, with they free, their free will, go... I'm accepting neutrality. I'm accepting the fact that I'm humble enough to see that I have this belief system, but I'm going to listen to this perception or this perspective in order to hear if it resonates with my actual truth, if it's being filtered in a way that doesn't serve me, or if I'm just supposed to let it go. Um, so that's what we're all doing. Uh, I could go way deeper into that, but that's kind of what's happening right now. So children will literally do and believe what you tell them because uh, I mean, most times, not all the time. So I know a lot of us who are going to start having children or have children who are very awake, um, aren't going to raise our children like that. And I'm not blaming any other generations or parents. They subconsciously did this. They, that was just how life was at the time. We're humbly forgiving everything that has put on, been put onto us in order to release it. That's why forgiveness is so important because if you don't forgive whoever sent those belief systems to you, then they're still going to stick on you. Um, you have to forgive in order to soften and then it'll let go. It'll just go away. Um, but a lot of children don't have that free will or neutrality mindset. So they'll do whatever their parents telling them to do. Um, so first of all, any parents out there, thank you so much for raising the children who are awake to this fact. Um, it's so important because, mm, I'll get there, but how, if a one person does it, it affects 
so many people around them and um, that involves their omega sphere. So we're going to get there probably towards the end of the video. Um, so what's happening is we're all releasing on individual levels and collective levels. We're releasing from the matrix belief systems that were put onto us from a young age or from past belief systems or karmic cycles. Um, who knows what? That's why when you call um, or you hear the rebirthing period or being born anew or being neutral, all that, that's or forgiving and coming to a um, or uh, greeting the dawn, creating a blank slate. There's so many terms that are so beneficial right now because what's that, what that's doing is letting you start fresh, not hold on or be pissed about um, when you realize how much belief structures around you, not being pissed about the past or mad at a person that sent that to you. And you just forgive, you start fresh and you go, all right, blank slate, this moment right now, even right now as you're watching this video, right now, I am choosing to be neutral. Every single now present moment, there's only the present moment only the present moment. And I'm choosing this present moment to use this present moment to choose neutrality, to choose a blank slate, to choose forgiveness. And what's going to happen is these matrix belief systems are going to start falling away so that you can actually figure out what you actually want to believe in, what you act what actually is your truth. Because I think I talked about this in my past few videos, every single one of us has a soul frequency. There's a frequency inside of us that's vibrating and attracting towards us every single thing we could ever need in this lifetime. Um, from all of our contracts we made, relationships, m abundance, money, homes, everything. Um, from a physical level to a higher level of happiness, joy, everything. Um, that's always, always, always coming towards us. But sometimes it's not able to get into us because it's... Not, it's either bouncing off or being filtered differently through these belief systems we're holding around us. So the more that we forgive and just allow those to dissolve and for us to be new and be curious and be like, okay, so who am I now? Like, who am I? Curiosity is key. Because as soon as you say that, everything that's coming towards you is going to be like, oh, I'll show you. I'll show you what actually serves you. And you're going to feel it. You'll feel it in every cell of your body that, whoa, this is my truth. This is meant for me. So when you hear information from the news and it filters differently and you're like that felt good that seems like something that is my truth or it could be who knows what um but you're building your you are in charge you are in charge of building that new matrix around you that new filter around you what this is doing it's called sovereignty of the mind you're calling back your own power um and you're not alone. The universe is completely supporting you in this because that's the contract every single human made. In order to be on this planet, I promise you, we would not be sent here if we couldn't do all of this. It just seems very scary and very intense right now because there's so much shit going on out there and we're holding on to so much programmed stuff that it seems like we're not being supported in the ways that we want to be. But as soon as we let go of that stuff, everything's going to keep coming to you. It's all it's always been trying to come to you. The abundance has always been trying to come to you. You just haven't been letting it in. Um, and it hasn't been your fault. It's just because there's some stuff, like some stuff around you that you're meant to let go of so that that stuff can come in. Um, okay. Because, okay. So belief systems at a root cause are frequencies that were pushed onto us. Um, so again, I'm just going to keep repeating information so your subconscious conscious can, can begin to resonate. Also, again, this is part of the practice I'm talking about is take whatever I'm saying and hear the words at a deeper level, accept them from a neutral stance and allow it to start dissolving your ego. And if stuff doesn't feel good, then let it go. Just don't hold on to things that aren't meant for you anymore. Um, okay, so a good example right now of this is um, and I don't, I'm not going to try to go into politics, but all of the politics. <laughs> okay. So we're going there. All the politics stuff going on, but I'm not going to say names or anything, but like Democrat versus Republic Republicans, for example, will have such a strong matrix and Democrats, Democrats and Republicans have such a strong matrix belief system set around them, whether it's something that they created themselves, or if it's, um, a lot from, news or from media outlets or from their parents um, or from religions. But what happens is someone um, who is super Democrat watching Trump talk will not be able to even comprehend one thing he's saying, even if he's doing something good or saying something nice, perhaps um, they won't be able to take that. They won't be able to comprehend that it was good or nice because they have that filter around them. That's like, no matter what he says, no matter what he says, I will not be able to accept it. And they created that as their truth. They're filtering all information 
and vice versa the other way. Any Republicans watching any Democrats, no matter what they say, even if it can be good or nice, they will not take it because they're just like, no, that is wrong. So it's real. you're really starting to see people's true colors and it's not from a judgmental standpoint, but you're seeing like, oh, that person has this frequency attached to them. I wonder if they created that or if um, they understand that that's their truth or was that pushed onto them. And I don't know. I just get so curious when I watch people get so worked up about this kind of stuff because um, it's just very eye-opening to be like, okay, so it's, it's okay to see their perspectives. Um, but there's a difference between having a filter around you that is judgmental and not allowing any information to come through because you just already made up your mind or being, okay, I'm creating this filter system around me. I know what my truth is and I'm okay with listening because I, I trust myself. I know how powerful and strong I am and I'm okay with listening to whatever this conversation, whatever this perspective has to say. If I'm super Republican, I'm okay with the fact that I'm going to watch this Democratic candidate and I'm just going to intend that I set my truth around me and I allow whatever words to come in. And if it serves me, even if it sit, hits my trigger point that I'm like, ooh, that's someone that I usually wouldn't listen to, but she just said something that might have actually resonated with my filter that I know I created. So I'm okay holding on to that. And it's okay to kind of like take pieces from both sides. Do we realize that the more that we start pushing against each other and going Democrat versus Republic, me versus you, like this versus that, how much have I talked about duality? How much it does not fucking serve us anymore? And that is being so left behind. And so what does serve us is creating our new belief filter around us, our new perspective frequencies that we create, that we don't allow other people to create for us, and that we take pieces and bits of from whoever and wherever and keep building our own filter. Like, you have to do that. That's where this new world is going. Um, every being outside of this third dimensional reality understands that. And they're okay with that because that's just how life is. But um, don't judge. We can't judge ourselves either for being in this part of our life right now because this is how we've been raised. And this is what we're learning how to break out of. But you have to be okay with the fact that it's time to break out of other people's belief systems. Um, so if you want to... Uh, I wouldn't suggest starting practicing this by watching the news <laughs> because right now the news is really set on making you believe whatever they want you to believe. They're like that parent, that super religious parent that's forcing ideals onto their children. That's what they're doing to us on a collective level. They're like, you're going to believe this. I'm going to shove all these frequencies with intention to you to stick around you so that no matter what the opposing person outside of our news channel says, you'll believe only what we say. Um, every single news station is doing that no matter what side they're on every single news station is doing that so don't start with the news start with like your friends or your family <laughs> and then when you feel like you're strong enough and you're okay from that neutral standpoint to watch something on a bigger collective scale um, just observe and just be okay with taking pieces and bits from multiple sides um, yeah okay so perspectives and frequencies. Um, that's what's happening. So don't put yourself in a box. Thank you. That was a huge one. Stop putting yourself in a freaking box. That's obviously goes with what I'm saying is, or in a filter bubble that doesn't, that isn't yours in the first place. Stop putting yourself in a box and labeling yourself. Um, even if it's the smallest label, when you claim that I am something, your entire, every cell in your body goes, okay, so we're that now. Um, and it creates like a diff an extra layer on that filter bubble around you. And that just isn't going to serve anyone. So just like, I just don't claim that you are anything. Don't put yourself in a box right now. Cause, um, you have to be okay with taking bits and pieces of everything, um, and creating your own truth. Cause again, we are our own expressions of source. We are our own expressions, um, and expressing that in a different way. And if we, all end up thinking or wanting to think the same way, which is what a lot of the elite wants us to do, then life's going to get super weird, but that's impossible. It sounds like a joke even thinking that that would be possible, but also it's kind of scary because you're seeing a lot of people are doing that right now. Um, so you're doing this to free yourself. And what happens is as you free yourself, you free others because you aren't setting judgments. So say that you're in the space that I'm talking about, you're super neutral and you're in communication with your parents who happen to still be in the very dense mindset of this is my truth and everyone else is wrong or whoever. Um, but you're in that space that I'm talking about 
if you're free, what happens is, remember that feedback loop I talked about? Um, your subconscious isn't anymore. So say you go to your parents' house, you're in communication with them. The old you would have already subconsciously or consciously expected the conversation that you're going to have with your parents to go a certain way or for that feedback loop to come and for you to perceive things a certain way and for them to perceive things a certain way. But when you're in the state of neutrality, like I'm talking about, and practicing creating your own truths and feeling what your own truth is, and then you're, you go to your parents' house, you're about to be in communication with them about who knows what, your subconscious isn't going to expect a feedback loop um, in a certain way anymore. You're not going to expect anything anymore. You're just going to be fully sitting in your own truth and just hearing exactly what they have to say and just waiting to see if some things they say resonate and you'll take and some things don't and you don't judge and you let them go by. What happens is that feedback loop um, isn't attaching to your parents anymore either or whoever you're in communication with. And that feedback loop by the root level is frequencies that you might be sticking onto them too. And you're not going to be doing that anymore. So it sets them free because their subconscious will feel that whether they consciously know it or not. This is what happens. Um, you don't even have to understand this. It might resonate when it's meant to, but their subconscious will be like, there's no con con like conflict here. There's no like bouncing back. There's no, like, I can tell that what I'm trying to set on attached to my child isn't attaching to them. Not that they would, parents would ever consciously try to harm a child. Most parents wouldn't, but subconsciously they're trying to mold them the way they want to be and their subconscious will be like oh this isn't working and they will tap into why isn't this isn't working why isn't this working their curiosity will be like okay even if, even this is all happening while you're t having the conversation with your parents their subconscious will try to reach out and be like hmm like what's inside of my child right now that isn't um allowing me to attach to it and it'll tap into that sense of neutrality, that sense of freedom and love and unity. And as soon as that happens, as soon as it taps into that, it, because again, higher frequencies, which is that unity neutrality that you'll be in, lower frequencies can only go up. Higher frequencies, it's really hard for higher frequencies to go down. So it'll, it'll have to raise its vibration to meet you. You won't lower your vibration to meet it. So it'll start setting your parents free or whoever you're in communication with because they'll start subconsciously consciously needing to be in communication with you to have a conversation with you they'll have to raise their vibration there's no choice their higher self their subconscious is going to make that happen because that your higher frequencies have um they've tapped into your higher frequencies and so they're like oh that's this is just that's just what consciousness does is it raises Con that's like the job of consciousness is to change to observe and to mold and change um and what it wants to do just from a natural root cause, that's what this world is naturally made to do is to raise its vibration, to raise its frequency. And so on an individual and collective level, that's what's happening. So you're truly setting other people free just by being in your state of neutrality. They'll tap into that and they'll start raising their vibration too. They don't have a choice. Uh, they don't even have to know that it's happening, but a few months down the road, even a few weeks, depends on the levels um, that it's happening or the speed that it's happening at. All of a sudden, your conversations are going to be way different. Um, and there's no need to be like, hey, I'm going to tell you exactly what I did to you because that might freak some people out. But um, just know inside, like this, if you need an extra, like, why should I do this? What's my why? Like, that's your why. You're setting yourself free and also every single person you're in communication with free. Um, so don't, another thing, don't be scared of the freedom because what's happening is you're going to be in such a new, everything, when you become free, everything's new. Um, when things are new, this sounds so elementary, but I want to say this to all levels of your being. When things are new, that means they haven't been done before. That means that they are unknown. Um, this society has a fear of the unknown. We kind of go, oh shit, like now that I'm so free, now what? And people, you can start tapping into the fear again with that, which seems so silly, but we're just naturally programmed to do that. So instead of saying like, just tell yourself before you start doing this practice or before you do any of this, I'm not going to be scared of freedom. I am not scared of freedom. I embrace change. I embrace freedom. I embrace the unknown. Don't be scared of the freedom. That's just going to help fuel you to raise. That's going to, fear is just going to fuel that part of you that's going to lower to meet the lower vibrations rather than holding yourself strong and um, requiring other people to meet you at the higher level. Um, fear is only going to lower you. And so just don't be scared of the freedom. It's okay to have all of your feelings about the fact that you can't be scared, that you shouldn't be scared. Like be like, that's scary that I can't be scared. That's, that's different because you're still like, I'm still loving myself though and I'm still choosing to embrace the unknown. 
but don't be scared of the freedom because you're also not alone in this. If that helps you too, you're not alone. There's a lot of us that are doing this right now. And a lot of us can sometimes feel alone. A lot of light workers are, that's why we're all so spread out around the world, but you're realizing it's changing because there's so many more people sometimes around you that are holding the same vibration. And if they're not, that's okay. That means that you were placed there for such a strong reason so that you can change them. Like embrace that. Be excited about that. Don't hate that. It's just looking at everything from a new perspective. Um, so choosing, oh, another thing that you can set the intention or set your filters with is choosing to live and to learn through joy and laughter. Like telling your higher self each morning or setting an intention during your practices. I'm choosing to learn through life now with joy and laughter. I no longer want to learn from pain and fear and triggers because that's also a thing that was set on um, us as as a society is we thought that we had to learn by um, being in fear and being in pain. And as a collective, that's what's happening right now. Um, So as an individual to start changing that, um, tell, just don't learn through fear and pain anymore. Before you hit rock bottom, you don't have to hit rock bottom anymore. You can just choose right now. All right. I'm choosing to learn everything through, through joy and laughter, looking at everything through the eyes of love, regardless of how triggered it used to make me. I'm not triggered any longer. Okay. Um, another, Oh, triggers. That's a fun point. Um, to know what you are kind of meant to release and what kind of triggers you um, or to see where the frequencies are physically placed around you. At least this is what I see in my healings. For any energy workers out there, this might be fun for you to practice. If this doesn't resonate with you at first, that is completely okay, but I still want to say it. Um, what triggers are at a certain level, on an energetic level, is, okay, so that frequency sent from your parents attached to you. It's trying to mold you. It's starting to create a net of um, belief systems around you. Um, when something's attached on your outer auric field, no matter where it is, it has a cord that directly connects to your, so all of us have an emotional, spiritual, mental, and physical body. And a trigger point or a frequency or a belief system is it has like an attachment to all four levels of your being, all four levels of your body that I just mentioned. Um, so especially your physical is easiest for us to work with, um, because we physically can feel we're in such a physical reality that we think Most people think, okay, I only can experience things physically, but we're learning that you can also feel things emotionally or mentally or spiritually, but triggers, um, the easiest way with the physical body is, um, what happens is a belief system. So you have, okay. Say there's like a belief system that attaches right here in front of you. It's directly connected, like say to like your upper middle chest. It doesn't matter where it is on your body, but it also sometimes is very specific points, um, and, uh, okay. That's a whole other, <laughs> I could go into this forever because sometimes it matters where it's placed on your auric field based if it's in regards to your future, to your past, to your loved ones on the side. Um, be curious about that. But anyway, say it's in the front, you have a direct connection from this fr- frequency to your chest. And then someone says something that opposes this filter that's placed on you. And it hit, when it hits that, you're going to feel it right here. You're, it's, it's, phys- it's a physical trigger. You're just like, Oh, why did that just like piss me off? But you feel kind of like something (laughs) like right in your chest or who, what just happened? Like right there. It's because frequencies need to get your attention in a physical way and we'll feel it in a physical way. Um, so physical triggers being very curious about where you're physically agitated or hurting or something. Cause that might be something that you're meant to focus on and release to breathe into and be like, Ooh, that doesn't feel good anymore. I'm going to get rid of that belief system. Even if I don't understand what belief system is right there, I can tell that something just hit me right here. I can feel it. And so I'm, I don't want that anymore. Um, but that also is a way of learning through pain and we don't want to do that anymore. (laughs) So setting intentions that you're going to release all the pain triggers around you at the same time is now I know that things are my truth when I am learning through joy and laughter. When something just hits me and it feels so good, that's like I'm setting that intention, that bubble, that net, that belief system is going to be around me. I'm going to look at everything from those perspectives. Um, Okay, so frequencies and perceptions. Break out of the matrix, people. Um, Be very cautious about what truths you're choosing to resonate with, what judgments you're choosing to subconsciously or um, consciously or to preconceive um, a conversation or some information you're hearing from the news or from candidates, whatever it is, just 
be very curious of if your truth is actually yours or if it's something that people have been telling you should be your truth. Um, okay. So the Omega sphere I kind of mentioned earlier. How am I doing on time? Nice. Okay. The Omega sphere. We all have our auric field or our star tetrahedron or um, Leonardo's sphere. So we put your arms out right at your fingertips and it's a perfect sphere from your fingertips all around your body. Um, that doesn't stop there. <laughs> we actually are way bigger than we realize, just in this physical body. Obviously, soul level, we're massive. Um, but what I've been, what my guides have really been focusing with me on is my omega sphere, which is a sphere that's about 50 to 60 feet outside of our body. Um, it's still just like the Leonardo sphere auric field around us, but it's way bigger and we're actually all tapping into it now um, because the veil is getting super thin. Uh, so what happens? Why, why they wanted me to talk about this is because just like with when you set yourself free, you'll set other people free. This is also um, kind of in correlation to that um, in regards to meditation. Um, so to kind of... If you feel, I'm going to um, see if you can feel your omega sphere. Um, how you'll feel it is it's always, always, always running energy 24-7. It's just kind of fun when you start tapping into it. But what it is, is um, we all have a sphere of light, a pranic tube, about if you touch your um, this finger and your thumb, <laughs> I can't think of the finger names, and your thumb together, and you it makes a perfect circle. It's like that thick and it's a tube that goes from about five feet above our head to five feet below our feet. And it goes directly like our spinal cord, all of our chakras, main chakras in our body are in that, our pranic, it's called our pranic tube, our tube of light, whatever you want to call it. Um, so we all have that inside of us. So what happens, why I'm talking about that with the omega sphere is energy. Um, so if you look up, like you could type in even toroidal, <laughs> that's a hard word toroidal field is it's like energy that's like a sphere that energy goes up and circulates out so it goes up circulates out comes back down and continues the circulation if you can kind of picture that or you can google it real quick um so you can ha kind of have an image but you'll actually be able to feel this energy so our omega sphere is constantly running energy in a toroidal toroidal field i'm never going to be able to say that word um but it's running energy constantly up through that central channel out around us 50 to 60 feet down about to that bottom of that tube about five feet below our feet and back up constantly so if you just close your eyes and you just set your intention i want to feel my omega sphere i want to feel my toroidal field <laughs> and you'll feel energy coming up it'll be running right up through the bottom through that sphere in the center of your body out of the top of your head and it's gonna now you'll know where it's going um and it's going about 50 to 60 feet above you and it's going all the way around you and back up. It's constantly cycling. Whether you feel it or not, don't try to control it because it, it's no, it's it's more intelligent than us, honestly. Is um, it's a part of our being that we're all beginning to tap into. It's always been there, but it's really becoming stronger and meant to be used right now. Um, because what the toroidal field? It's again a perfect sphere around us. It has quadrants, so it has the east, the west the north, the south, and it has, um, or sorry. Yeah. Okay. So the, it has the right side, the left side, the front side, the back side, it has the north and the south and then the center. Um, because what, what, why I'm saying that right now is those quadrants of our omega sphere directly, directly, directly align with the omega sphere of this planet with mother earth. And what we're meant to do right now is to physically, with our intention or out loud, tell our omega sphere to align with the omega sphere or with the light. It's like a light body. You could call it the light body of Mother Earth with the light body or the omega sphere of Mother Earth. Omega sphere, I am telling you with intention and with love to align with the omega sphere of Mother Earth, of, of New Earth. Say New Earth because sometimes you want to be really clear about your intentions because sometimes it can... Um, you might align with old earth, which is still super good too, but new earth is where we're going. So with new earth, Omega sphere, I align you with, um, the frequencies of new earth and you'll actually sometimes feel. So if you want to focus on like your Omega sphere, focus on the East first or the right side of it, 
and then focus like you're outside of the body, like you're looking at Mother Earth from the right side of her. And you will, it takes about four seconds, but you will align your light body with hers. And you might actually feel the right side of your energy of your omega sphere align with hers. Then you can go to the left, then you go to the front, then you go to the back, then you go to her north pole, then to her south pole, and then to her heart, to the center of the earth, which is aligning your heart with hers. And then what, what's going to happen is you're going to start feeling your heart directly connected with Mother Earth's and you'll feel the energy directly. I don't know how to describe it, but you'll actually feel like a deeper, like a boom, boom, like a big pulse because you'll notice that your heart is actually pulsating with the same magnetic frequency of the core of the earth. That is super important right now because the shifts that we're going through are because she's going through shifts. So we're meant to be supported and aligned with new earth. Also, she's already in the future time. She's in all timelines. She's in the future new earth timelines that we're trying to get to. So it's super beneficial to be aligned with those timelines. Um, also, not to cause any fear, but if there's ever any pull shifts or solar flares or things that won't physically hurt her, if you're aligned with her, they won't hurt you. Um, that's just impossible because you are her. Um, but if you're, you have to be directly aligned with her. Um, another reason I'm saying this is all of our omega spheres are directly connected to each other's. Like I'm talking about human beings right here. Um, because you'll start noticing that that energy I'm talking about that's flowing up and around you, that energy is actually that source consciousness that I'm, that I've been talking about. And that same source lives within every single person every single person. Again, we're just expressing it differently with different bodies, but that energy is still the same. The energy that's feeding us, that's feeding our prana, that's feeding our light bodies around us is still the same. And so when we connect and align with our omega sphere, that means we're directly connecting with the source that lives inside every single person on this planet. Whether you understand that or not, it could be someone on the opposite side of the world from you, but you're directly aligned with them at that moment. But specifically how you'll feel this is if you, it's good to like practice if you don't want to do it um, in front of people at first. <laughs> Derek knows I do this now, but at first I didn't tell him. That's my boyfriend. Um, when you're laying in bed, like with your partner or if someone's in the room near you, um, if you just, you can close or open your eyes. I just open my, I can open my eyes and do it now. But you feel the energy, connect with your omega sphere, align it with Mother Earth's. And then after you align it with Mother Earth's, set the intention that you align it with whoever, whatever individual is in the room with you. Um, because when you do that, sorry, there's a neighbor walking over. I'm going to set the intention that this house is cleared and protected. This sometimes attracts some weird energy when I start doing these videos. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Set the intention to align your Omega sphere with, um, whatever individual you're near. So if you're in bed at night or whatever, and so you're watching TV, and you'll actually begin to feel what they're feeling. Oh, okay. Sorry, I missed the big step. After you align with Mother Earth, again, we all have um, a mental and emotional body. Set the intention. We have a mental and emotional body kind of around our Leonardo sphere, that like smaller sphere outside of our hands. That's where our mental and emotional bodies lie. Set the intention that they also get pushed out. Your mental and emotional bodies get pushed out to the outside of your omega sphere. You'll actually feel like weight was lifted off your shoulder. You'll feel like, oh, thank God. Like I don't have much as emotional or mental clutter around me because you're not meant to hold your mental and emotional clutter that close to you. It's meant to be like 50 to 60 feet outside of you because most times it's not even yours to be holding on to. Um, but as you do that, you push it out to the outside of you so that you can really, really, really feel. You'll start feeling like what someone 50 to 60 feet away from you is feeling. Um, specifically when it's someone near you, like in the room I was talking about, you'll really start feeling what they're feeling. You're, you're okay. You're safe to feel this. This isn't like you're going to attach or it's not going to harm you or the other person. Um, but it'll be a real physical experience because you'll be feeling what they're feeling and then just breathe and stay very present with the energy of your toroidal field. You'll start, whether you want to or not, try to control it. I can't control it anymore. You'll start breathing the exact same way that that person is, um, I don't really understand why or how, but that experience keeps happening to me and it's super amazing to see. So then I also just know with my intuition that I'm also breathing the same way um, alongside Mother Earth, but you'll start breathing the same as that person. Um, you'll be feeling what they're feeling. Then you can choose like, okay, I don't want to feel that anymore and you won't feel it. It's just like cool to know, okay, I have that power to say, 
how is that person feeling? It's really, this is really beneficial for the healers out there. So you can directly experience what they're feeling, but it won't be harming you. And then you can be like, okay, that's enough. And then you can tell that person like, hey, because sometimes they're not aware of what they're feeling. Um, but another very beneficial reason to do this, to work with your omega sphere is meditation. Um, when you start meditating every single morning, I know most of you probably have a meditation practice or you do a little bit of this and that. I know I'm not um, good at doing it 24 seven either, but I, uh, my guides could not have been more clear about how important it is to do a daily meditation practice right now of seeing the world or feeling peace and love and kindness and unity around us. And you're actually going to be feeling, now you'll understand that you're surrounding your entire, your entire omega sphere, your entire 50 to 60 foot field around you with those energies. So now when you're near someone else, they will have no choice. They won't even realize it's happening, but it's going to be calming them into that same frequency, into those same emotions as well. Because if you're breathing the same, you'll definitely be feeling the same. If you can feel what they're feeling, but you have a higher frequency of peace, kind, kindness, love, unity, um, whatever feels good for you that day, it's going to match their frequencies to it. Just like I was saying with the perspective um, game, if you want to call it a game is that's what's happening, but it's so beneficial to do this every single morning because yes, it's really, really going to affect everyone in the room around you. Um, but it's also going to start affecting all of your neighbors, your neighborhood, individuals who are also tapped into their auric field in any way, whether they really know what they're doing or not with it. If they're tapped into their auric field, that means that their consciousness and subconsciousness is um, willing to accept change. And if you're in that higher frequency of I'm going to create change, it'll, they'll be able to accept what you're putting off. Does that make sense? So please create a very strict um, meditation practice and don't make it annoying. I don't like that word strict that I just used, um, but it's, it's fun. It's supposed to be fun, but you're doing it for a really big reason now because it's going to be shifting everyone. The veil is so thin. There's a reason we're tapping into our omega spheres so that we can all start using these energies that are serving us, these higher frequencies of energy that serve the highest good of everyone involved. Um, so yeah, if you can really all start doing that, my guides were very, um, very clear on me wanting to share that. That's going to be very beneficial and um, also allowing other people to not have to learn through pain or fear anymore. Like I was saying, they'll be able to learn through love and laughter and joy because you'll be in those frequencies and you're choosing like, okay, um, this is what I'm choosing to do. Again, if we want to go back to the dark and light, the dark is doing really good at their job. You want to know what you can do? What you can do to be really good at your responsibility is to meditate and set the intentions that everyone aligned with their omega spheres or auras are also set in this exact frequency that you're holding and vice versa. They'll be sending it to you too. And you'll be consciously like, okay, yes, I'm accepting all of the love that's out there. That's trying to come to me. Um, okay. So that's the omega sphere. Yeah. Meditating, affecting others. You still with me? Oh, it's two, two, two right now. That was amazing. So that's a big freaking like hello from heaven. Like, please do what I just said. <laughs> two, two, two in mountain time, whatever time it is that you're watching this. Um, okay. So another thing kind of going back to 3d blah, with the shit going on, um, please vote in person. If you can, there's going to be some weirder shit going on. There's a lot of, um, Intel coming from so many directions about how, the polls are going to get so weird, especially, especially with mail-in voting. It's completely, um, if I'm hitting an ego point right now or a trigger point, just observe it and allow it to wash through. Don't shove anything back on me. But I'm just, if, if this resonates with you at all, um, voting in person um, and being feeling safe as you do that and feeling that that's your truth, that to get my truth clearly, um, I feel like I want to be in person for this. Um That'll also allow others, now you understand why, with the omega sphere and with your perceptions, to feel the same and to do the same. But um, just mailing, mail in voting is going to allow for so much cheat, just so much stuff that we don't want to happen, happen <laughs> that I'm not going to get into any of this. I don't, I don't feel like this, mo this video is meant to get into the politics of um, who to vote for, of course. But um, you might have your truth out there. And so I really hope. And of course, I don't want to talk about that on video either. But if you have your truth out there, please begin to create your own truths and to listen to the perspectives of the candidates and actually what is resonating or what feels like they're being forced to say or what feels like um, isn't for the highest good of all. Okay. 
Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't want to get deep into politics right now. The main thing I wanted to say about that was voting in person because um, they're going a lot of weird stuff. Again, like I said, we're kind of about to step out of the eye of the storm. Um, I would be very, very, very surprised if the election actually was done on um, in November. I My guides were saying that I'm feeling at least like a four-month extension, um, which is super unfortunate. But it's just, it'd be amazing if we could all set the intention that the truth be showed, the, the truth be told, that the candidate who's meant to be there for the highest good of everyone involved um, is voted in. But there's so many parts and pieces involved here that I really feel like this isn't going to end in November. And so to just be prepared and okay with that, kind of softening the blow now and understanding that before that all happens and before I feel the freak out of the entire world when they realize that that's happening, I was already prepared for that. I'm nice and neutral. I'm saying this is what we should all be saying to ourselves. Um, and I'm safe and I did everything I could and I'm still going to continue to hold that peace and love and light for those individuals who can't find that for themselves right now. Um, cause there's going to be a lot of chaos. The, it's going to get louder again. We're stepping out of the quietness. Um, because both sides, both forces are going to be trying to win and push against each other. That's all part of this. That's okay. That's there. Everyone's doing their job. You just have to be in your stance of where you stand in that or neutral. Um, and it's okay. I'm not saying you have to only be neutral. It's okay to lean one way or the other, but don't be opposed a hundred percent to different pieces that you're hearing again. Um, we're going to make it. <laughs> That's a huge thing I want to start with or say right now is we are going to make it the new earth, the timeline, the higher timeline, the fifth dimensional and beyond. We're not just ending at a fifth dimension, by the way, that's just the beginning. That's where we're all just like really, really woke. And then we just like keep it on a freaking rocket ship from there. Um, it's super exciting. Feel the excitement from that. Feel that that's actually a truth that just resonated with you. I know it did. Like, I don't know how or when or why this is going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. And it is because from one future timeline, we're already there. We are already there. We know how we got there. And that actual, the, this is a whole other time travel thing that it's been going around. But um, those individuals, us in the future is currently helping, um, are currently helping us right now because we need help to get there. And it's actually not that far in the future is uh, what my guides were showing is um, I see 10 years maximum, maximum. Um, that's probably being generous because we can always shift timelines and the more of us that have that willingness and drive and intention that, Hey, I need the truth and this ascension to happen. And now, and I'm going to manifest exactly what that looks like inside of myself rather than make other people do it for me. The more that more of us do that, um, the faster that timeline's going to get, the closer that timeline's going to get. But if we're on the timeline we're on now, I'm seeing 10 years max, but, um, that's coming really fast. So um, it's going to happen. We're going to make this leap. We're going to make this jump um, be really excited for that, but keep doing the work that involves us to get there um, and appreciate life. That's what I kind of want to end this with is please start appreciating your life like the gift that it is. I know that sounds so cliche, but in a sense, the innocence that human beings are is because we <laughs> that can hit your ego in any way, but the entire galaxy looks at us like we look at an infant. Like they look at even the oldest human being, they'll look at them like an infant because we're so innocent and so powerful and we don't even know how powerful we are. They're like, that's so cute, <laughs> like, but really kind of powerful. When human beings realize how powerful we are, that's why we're being the way showers for the entire galaxy. Um, but our innocence right now is meant to be that driving force for us just to appreciate life. The fact that um, we can make this shift by just loving each other and loving life and that creates a global shift is pretty unheard of. And that's, again, why we're being way showers is literally living from your heart, living from love, seeing everything through the eyes of love, seeing like, what would my heart do in this situation? What would my heart do in this situation? What would my heart do in this situation? From one perspective, that's being like super innocent, even though it's super intelligent because your heart is so intelligent, like so intel it's more intelligent than your brain. Again, um, highly recommend checking out my heart to brain course on my website. And this is not a plug. I'm just saying the heart is very intelligent. Um, but from one perspective, it's also super innocent because it's, all it is is loving everything, absolutely everything. Um, and when you start to do that, you start to look at everything like it's a gift. 
And then everything that you need or that you could ever, ever want will present itself to you. There's no choice. That's just how this free world or this free will planet works. Um, so innocence also always, always, always chooses the path of divine or of unconditional divine love. I know that's talked about a lot in the, the Sophia code as well. Please, please, please. Um, if it resonates with you at all and you just heard that, please be open to reading the Sophia code. Um, that's a huge step or like a rocket ship path on this ascension journey. Cause you kind of open up to, okay, now what? Um, anyways, there was just a knock on the door. <laughs> um, but yes, so opening yourself up to that and then, um, just being okay with the fact that we are all innocent beings doing the best that we can. We're all sitting in love. We're all sitting in light and that we're all going to make this together. Um, but we're honoring each other. We're honoring our hearts and we're honoring our hearts to be the way showers for us which will then allow everyone else to do the same. And I hope you can see that now from a different perspective. Um, but yeah, life is such a gift. And I know it seems insane out there right now, but we are all in this together. We're going to make it. We're meant to be going through this. Um, and it's going to be beautiful. It's, it has to be rocky right now because for some reason, human beings wanted to learn through pain and fear, but we're changing that. Pretty soon, we're going to be learning through love and joy. So keep setting that intention, keep helping those around you, release the judgment, set your own truths, and we will make it together, okay? Oh, okay, I'm going to leave it at that. Have a beautiful rest of your weekend, and I will hopefully be sharing some smaller, quicker videos soon, but I just wanted to put all this into one, um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, I love you all so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye!